Hi, I'm Jim Brickman. You know, people ask me all the time about how I first got interested in the piano. Well, I actually started playing when I was about four, and I was a pretty shy kid, but I always had a million melodies going around in my head. Now, my family didn't have a piano, but our neighbors did. And I'd go over to their house, put my fingers on the piano keys, and I knew that I finally found a way to express myself. Well, then I really wanted a piano of my own. My parents weren't anxious to get me a piano because they figured, you know, he'd want the piano one day and the next day maybe the drums or the trumpet or something. So instead, my parents signed me up for piano lessons, but with no piano. So I had to practice on this piece of green felt, had the notes drawn on it in magic marker. And I played the felt for about two years. And I think my parents finally figured out that I was pretty serious about it. Well, I wasn't very good when I started. In fact, my rhythm was way off. If you had been at my third grade piano recital, there's a good chance you would not be watching this right now. My first piano teacher told my mom I should give it up, that I had no talent. But my mom said that she didn't care if I was good at it, she just knew that it made me happy. When I think back, I don't know what I would have done without a piano in my life. It's amazing that something as simple as a melody can affect you in so many ways. Well, my training was very traditional. As for my style, well, it didn't come overnight. It took many years of lessons and a lot of different teachers. Thankfully, I found a teacher who recognized my passion and encouraged me to play creatively. The inspiration of that teacher, Marshall Griffith, is the reason that I wanted to do this. Everybody needs a mentor. So I hope I can take you through the first steps of piano playing as you begin your musical journey. First off, we're gonna start with some basics. You're gonna learn the names of the notes on the keyboard. You'll learn how to play using your individual fingers and some single note songs. And then we're gonna have a chance to play together. Now, by the time we finish, you're gonna have a basic understanding of music theory and you'll be well on your way to playing your favorite songs at a beginner level. Now, of course, learning the piano is all about having fun, something that you want to do, not something you have to do. So if you can practice about 10 to 15 minutes every day, it really makes a big difference. I mean, I know we're all really busy, but the more you play, the better you're gonna get. And this is really important too, learning at your own pace. In any new skill, you need to learn to walk before you can run, and playing the piano is no exception. So there are no rules, no need to rush, just take your time, learn at your own pace. The way that we've done these lessons, they're set up so that you can jump around and repeat the lessons whenever you want. So let's get started. Now my first piano was an upright piano. We kept it in our basement in Cleveland. It had 88 keys. Now, some of you may be using an electronic piano or keyboard. That one may have anywhere from 61 to 88 keys, but it really doesn't matter. Now the keyboard is just a repeating pattern of 12 notes made up of white keys and black keys. Because the black keys are organized in groups of two then three, the patterns are pretty easy to see as they repeat up the keyboard. Now, if you know anything about music and the piano, you may already know that the keys are defined by the first seven letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now we're gonna start in the middle of the keyboard by putting your thumb on C, middle C. Middle C is the first white key, right to the left of the group of two black keys in the middle of the piano. Middle is a great starting point for the first lesson. Play middle C now with the thumb of your right hand, like this. Now the thumb is called finger number one, and that's because music guides your fingers to the keys through numbers. So instead of saying use your index finger, next use your middle finger, it's easier to guide through numbers. So remember, both thumbs are called number one. K, 
Okay, before we move on, let's find and play some of the C's on your keyboard. Remember, they are to the left of the group of two black keys. So here are the two black keys, and here's the C note. Now on the upper part of the keyboard, here are the two black keys, and here is the C note. So as you can see, locating a C note anywhere on the keyboard is easy. Now we're going to learn the key location of D, E, F, and G, and the corresponding finger numbers for the right hand. We're going to start with a basic five finger pattern using C, D, E, F, G. Now go ahead and put your whole hand on the keyboard so you can see how each finger rests on the keys, and align your thumb with middle C. Now make sure you don't place your hand flat like this. Place it on the keyboard with the fingers slightly bent, almost like you're holding a little ball. Like my teacher always used to say, curve your fingers. See where your index finger is? It should be right next to the thumb on the next white key, which we call D. Play D with your index finger, which is finger number two of your right hand. Now play C, then D, like this. Now from the same hand position, you'll notice that your middle finger, which is finger number three, is now resting on the next white key, which is E. Let's go ahead and play E now with your third finger. Now let's play all three notes in one sequence, just like this. Fantastic. You've just played the first three notes of the C hand position. Now we're going to practice it a few more times. All you have to do is follow the screen prompts. It's going to cue you when to play, and then you're going to play along with me. Now I'm going to take it slow so you can focus on using all three fingers. One, two, ready, go. C, D, E, again. C, D, E, again. C, D, E. Now let's move on. From the same hand position, you'll now notice that the fourth finger, or your ring finger of your right hand, rests on F. Play F now with your fourth finger. Now play C, D, E, F. One, two, ready, go. Great job. Now for tricky finger number five, the pinky, the weakest finger. Finger five should be resting on G. Play it now with your pinky finger. Now play all five notes in sequence along with me. One, two, ready, go. Again, one more time. One, two, ready, go. If you can play all five fingers cleanly, you can move on now. If not, practice a little bit more. You're going to master it in no time. Now that you know these five notes, C, D, E, F, G, and you know the fingering of your right hand, one, two, three, four, five, it's time to mix it up a little. Play the notes in different sequences, all from the same five note locked hand position. Play the notes down. Jump a note. Even repeat a note. Let's start by reversing the pattern and play it backwards going down the keys. I'm going to play it first. Then I'm going to ask you to play it the same way. So listen and try to mimic the timing as well as the notes. Let's give it a go. I'm going to play G, F, E, D, C. 
Now you play. One, two, ready, go. Again, I'll play G, F, E, D, C. Now you give it a try. One, two, ready, go. All right, we're doing good. And you can now go up five notes and down five notes. You know, sometimes in my songs, you hear this pattern, this scale of C, D, E, F, G, and down, like in this song called American Dream. Why don't we try a short exercise now? I'm going to play a musical phrase, just a few simple notes, and then I'm going to ask you to repeat it after I play it. For example, I'm going to play C, D, E, and then you repeat. Remember to listen and also copy the rhythm if possible as well. Now let's try a few more patterns. Once again, I'm going to play them, and I'm going to ask you to copy me. You ready? C, D, E, F. One, two, ready, go. E, D, C, D, E. One, two, ready, go. Now you might recognize that little song if I just added a few more notes. Now let's bump it up a notch and I'm going to skip notes. This is C, E, G, and it sounds like this. C, E, G. One, two, ready, go. D, F, E. One, two, ready, go. E, F, D, E. One, Two, ready, go. Now that we've skipped a note on a five note scale, how about trying this pattern? C, D, E, C. C, D, E, C. One, two, ready, go. Now I know you recognize that last pattern. You see, everything begins with the basics. And as you can hear, just learning a few notes can give you the skill to play familiar songs. So as we recap lesson two, here's what you've accomplished. You now know the name of five notes. You're starting to play music using individual fingers. You're even listening to timing and developing your ear in just two lessons. Now join me in the practice and play along studio or continue on to the next lesson. So now you know the name of the five keys on the keyboard, C, D, E, F, G. But in the beginning, we mentioned all seven notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. However, we skipped the A, B because, as we mentioned, we wanted to start with the easiest hand position, and that began with C. 
Now it's time to add the last two notes, A and B, so that you have a feel for all the notes across the keyboard. Now the first part of this lesson is to teach you how to locate the A and B keys. It's pretty easy when you think about the alphabet, A, B, C, and since you already know where the C is, B comes before C, A comes before B. So now you know all the names of the notes across the entire range of your keyboard. Now, wherever you are on the keyboard, if this is C, then this is A and B. So up here, A, B, C. Or down here, A, B, C. As you practice, of course, you're going to gradually memorize these notes as you instantly visualize the repeating pattern of these seven letter names. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Okay, let's get back to making some music. We're going to learn to practice a song where you're going to play all seven notes in a row just like this, slowly. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now you can play each note using the same finger if you want to. Or if you want to use an individual finger like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's fine, whatever is comfortable for you. The cool thing about this lesson is that we're going to turn these seven notes into a song. Now the first note for this song is A. We're going to use an A in the middle range of the keyboard. So get ready with your hand in position, and then the screen will cue you when to play each note. If you'd like to play that song again, just visit the Practice and Play Along studio. Now, so far, we've only been playing the white keys. In this lesson, we're going to now add the black keys. You know, it's really funny because I hear so many piano players say that they don't like playing the black keys. They only want to play the white ones. But the black keys are very important and, of course, necessary to play any kind of music. After all, if you didn't have black keys, we would never have this song. A theme that uses only two notes, one white key and one black key. I'm sure you've heard this. Or maybe recognize this song, Beethoven's Furilis. Unlike the white keys, where they're aligned across the keyboard next to each other, when you look at the black keys, you can now see that they're grouped in units of two and three, and that they're part of the 12-note pattern that repeats up and down the keyboard. They also help a beginner visualize the repeated pattern of the note names. So when you see the two black keys, you're focusing in on these three notes, C, D, E. When you see the three black keys, you're focusing in on these four notes, F, G, A, B. The names for the black keys are simply extensions of the white key names based on these two symbols. When reading music, 
these symbols are located next to the note. They'll direct you to move one note up or one note down from the letter named note. Now let's take a closer look at each of these symbols. The symbol that directs you up is called a sharp symbol, and it looks like a number sign, like this. For example, you already know that this is D. Therefore, if you see a sharp symbol, you move up to the black key, which is D sharp. And the symbol that directs you down is called a flat, and the flat symbol looks like a lowercase b. For example, you know that this is the D key. Therefore, if you see a flat symbol, you move down to the black key, which is D-flat. One of my early piano teachers used to tell me that an easy way to remember the direction of the symbols is to visualize this analogy. Think of a tire. If you ran over something sharp in the road, it'd be sticking up. So when you think of a sharp, think up. And if your tire had a flat, the tire would go down. So flat equals down. Let's apply this logic and see if you can find the A sharp. First find the middle A. If we move to the first black key up or above A, there's A sharp. Now let's go for trying another sharp key. How about G sharp? All you do is locate the G key. If this is the G note, then this must be the G sharp key. Okay, now let's try a flat, E flat. So if this is E, then I locate the next black note to the left, which is this one, the E flat key. So you've learned the names of the notes, and you've learned the direction of the sharp and flat symbols. You now know all the names of the keys on the keyboard, and you've learned the basic language of speaking music. Now let's play a musical phrase using a black key. In this case, we're going to take one note and make it a flat, this time the E note. Remember, we learned this five note phrase. Well, this time we're going to play those same five notes, only this time we're going to use the E flat, making it sound a little more haunting. Now you go ahead and play that phrase when cued. One, two, ready, go. C, D, E flat, F, G. Now practice playing the phrase both up and down. Okay, this time I'm going to play the accompaniment and you play along with me. The screen is going to cue you when to play each phrase. Okay, now you're getting really good at playing with the right hand, but I'm sure that you're getting anxious to play with both hands. 
Now usually the right hand will play the melody and the left hand will play some sort of accompaniment. Your left hand will often play a variety of different patterns of notes. Sometimes you'll play these notes together and sometimes they'll be broken up a little bit. A lot of times these are rhythm patterns and as I mentioned earlier the rhythm patterns have always been sort of challenging for me. So that's why we're going to try an easy pattern so you can quickly get the feel of using your left hand on the piano. Now take a look at both your hands. You'll notice that they are a mirror image of each other. So anything that you can do with your right hand you can do with your left, right? Okay, as an example, you can put your right thumb on middle C and play up the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five. Now try putting your left thumb on middle C and play the keys down the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's begin by just trying to work on the left hand only. Start with your left thumb on middle C. Now go to your pointer finger and play B. Now your middle finger on A. Keep going with your next finger down to G. And finally play the F key with your pinky. And now let's work back up. F, G, A, B, C. Now it probably feels a little strange to move those fingers independently. Sometimes it's kind of difficult to do, especially if you're right-handed. It may take a little practice, but don't be discouraged because it really is hard for everyone at first, even me. Now this pattern that you just played is used in a lot of different songs and now we're going to do one together. You can play the same pattern down and up the keys that you just played with your left hand. I'm going to play the right hand part and this means in this lesson you're going to accompany me. So get ready with your hand in position and then the screen will cue you when to play each note. Like we talked about earlier, when you play both hands at once, the right hand usually plays the melody and the left hand usually plays the accompaniment. This is one reason it's really important to learn a left hand technique called chords. Chords are a group of notes that are played at the same time that create harmony for the song. Some chords are very simple, like major chords. Others are more complex, like these. It's the various patterns of these chords underneath a melody that help make a song unique. And as you develop your skills, you're going to continue to learn more chords that will in turn allow you to play a lot more songs. Now for this lesson, we're going to start with the easiest chord, the major chord. 
In fact, I'm going to teach you very quickly three major chords. That's all you need to play literally hundreds of songs. You're even going to find music books where every song only uses three chords. Now the three chords we're going to learn are easy to remember because they all follow a very simple formula. You're basically playing every other note. So to begin, put your pinky on the C key. But instead of the middle C, let's move down the keyboard to a lower C. This is a much better range for playing chords because then you have more room for the melody in your right hand. So if your left pinky is on C, hold that down. And with your middle finger, skip D and play the E key. Now without letting up on either of those keys, skip over F, play G with finger number one or your thumb like this. Now you can see how natural this combination of keys looks. There's a white key in between each of the three keys that I'm holding down. This chord we're playing right now is called the C major chord because the very first note or the root of the chord is on the C key. Now take your hand off the keyboard and let's try it again. But now this time instead of forming the chord one note at a time, Try to play all three notes at the exact same time. This means you're going to want to line up your fingers over the keys before you press them down. And when you think you have it, play the chord. Again, it's going to feel a little awkward until your fingers get used to this position. But here's the good news. Once you have this hand position in control, you can have the ability to play so many different chords. One of the tricks that my first piano teacher taught me about practicing chords and getting your hand ready is to do this on a table just without the piano. So for example, let's say that this is the table. You put your right hand or your left hand or both right on the top of the table. You put down one, three, five and lift up two and four and then practice that just lifting up two and four and then down on two and four, and up on one, three, and five, and then back and forth. It's a great way to practice at a table. So if you're bored sometime and you just want to learn chords and become a little bit more flexible, it's a great one to try. Now before we get to the three magic chords that jump around the keyboard, let's give you a chance to practice this locked hand position just by moving one note away. And to practice and have fun at the same time, let's play this together. Your task is going to be to play simple chords starting from the C note, then moving up to the next note, but holding the hand position with your pinky on the D note, and then back down to C, like this. Then alternate the chords until we stop. Once again, I'm going to play music on top of you, turn it into a song that you can sound great even while you're practicing this hand position. Now just get your hand in position to play the C chord and then follow the prompts.
now that you have the feel for the hand position and you can play the C chord, I'm going to show you how to play the other two chords, F and G, in just a matter of seconds. And then because, as you just saw, you freeze your hand in that chord position, you just move it to a different location on the keyboard. Now let's try it. Play the C chord again with me. Now lift up your hand in that same position. Move it to the right until you hit the F key with your pinky. The notes that you're going to be playing will be F, A, and C. If you're playing those keys, you're now playing an F chord. Now let's pick up your hand one more time. Just move it over one key to G and then play that chord. Your finger should be landing on G, B, and D. You can probably guess the name of this chord. It's the G chord. Again, because the first note or the root of the chord is G. Now you just played your first chord progression. Now believe it or not, these chords have been the foundation for many, many hit songs. All kinds of styles, from doo-wop to Elvis songs, even classic rock and roll and country. If I just play these three chords in sequence with a rhythm pattern in tempo, you can probably imagine a familiar song. And that's because chords create the foundation for songs. Let's start back with our C chord. That's the one where your pinky is on the C key. Now lift up your hand in that locked hand position and move it up to the F chord position. This means your left pinky will be on F. And finally lift it up again and move it to the G chord position. Now let's try it one more time. C, F, G. The more you practice these three chords, the quicker you'll be able to play them on the keyboard. And being able to play chords quickly is an important key to playing pop music. Here's a great example of a song that uses three chords we've just learned. Now watch my left hand as it moves from a C chord to an F chord to a G chord and finally back to C. A whole bunch of folk songs and hymns can be played with these three chords as well. Okay, so now you've played piano with your right hand and your left hand. But if you're like a lot of people, it might not seem like an accomplishment until you get a chance to play them both together. Well, as they say, we've saved the best for last. So now join me in the final session and we're gonna put it all together. The last part of our learning experience is to give you a chance to feel what it's like to play both hands together. Now we're not going to play complete songs, just a couple of musical phrases that use a few chords in the left hand and melody in the right hand. Whenever I play anything challenging, I always practice each hand separately. Even when I first started playing music, my teacher would always have me learn each song this way. 
So to make this easy, you should practice the left hand and right hand separately before putting them together. Now the first phrase that we're going to try is joy to the world. Now let's try just the right hand melody part of Joy to the World. Now this is a scale that starts on the C above middle C and then goes all the way down to middle C. Now you already know the rhythm pattern of the notes. Now let's learn the notes. This is the first phrase of the note sequence and it just walks down the keyboard. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Now here's the second phrase, G A A B B C. So let's try the first phrase together and we're going to take it slow. You can just use your index finger if you want to. One, two, ready, go. Now here's the second phrase. Just play along. One, two, ready, go. Now practice the right hand until you can play close to the speed or the right tempo or whatever feels comfortable for you. One, two, ready, go. Now the left hand part of this song uses the magic three chords that we learned in this sequence. C, F, G, C. Now go ahead and play the chords while I supply the melody, then you can see when they change. One, two, ready, go. When you can play both parts clearly, then you can put them together and it's going to sound like this. The very last song that we're going to learn how to play is one of my compositions, a song that I play all the time in concert called Angel Eyes. Now you've heard me play it many times, now it's your turn. So first, the right hand, I'm going to give you the melody. Here we go. E, E, F, G, G, D, E, C, C, D, E, D, C, C. Now the next phrase in the song actually repeats the same one we just did. So here we go on the repeat. E, E, F, G, G, D, E, C, C, D, E, D, C, C. Okay, now that's the right hand melody. Now we're going to do the left hand, the accompaniment. And this uses those three magic chords that we've learned, C, G, and F, in this sequence. I'm going to play the right hand part and you play the left hand chords 
All you have to do is follow the prompts. One, two, ready, go. Now, when you can play both parts clearly and you've tried practicing them separately, you can put them together and it's going to sound like this. Now you've reached this point and I encourage you to go back to any of these lessons and practice with them or keep visiting our practice and play studio. You know, it's really important for you to be comfortable with the keyboard, the black keys, the chords, all of the basics, because the more comfortable you become, of course, the more fun you're going to have. Now, what we've accomplished in just a short time usually takes about six to eight weeks of one-hour lessons with a piano teacher. But even a teacher would tell you this is not the entire learning process. You have to learn to read music, understand rhythm, and that's what we're going to explore on the next DVD. Now, this series has been designed for those of you who have a love of music. So I hope this gives you the inspiration to go further and enjoy the music.